grow all sorts of plants in containers. And for me, they give me such a great opportunity to grow a really big range of species. This is Acacia a filler. It's one of my favourite Australian plants. And it is adapted to a really harsh, dry climate just outside of Perth in Western Australia. Hot, dry, well-drained soil. That's what it wants in nature. But I live in a cool climate and I have a heavy clay soil underneath me. So by growing it in a container, I can create the perfect conditions for this plant to thrive. And of course, you can always grow food in pots. A bay tree by the back door means you've always got a leaf to pick and chuck in a soup. But plants growing in containers aren't all set and forget. In fact, they can be quite a bit of work. So every few months, I like to work through my whole collection and do a pot plant audit. I look at what's growing really well, what might need a little bit of work, and what might need a whole change of scenery. First, do they need a feed? When you contain a plant in a pot, you of course contain it from accessing everything it needs in life, including food. And so you need to be a little bit aware of different fertiliser needs. Now, most of my container plants I feed with one thing, and that is organic fertiliser. It's particularly good for things like citrus that need a regular and really decent feed. I use a small handful just in the top of the pot three or four times a year, and then I'll give them a liquid feed in the warmer months a couple of times to give them an extra boost. Top dressing with a bit of compost, worm castings or leaf mould is also great as it washes into the mix and gives it a boost. And then put a bit of mulch on top to keep the goodness in. It's really important to water well when you fertilise. A weak liquid feed regularly is a great way to push growth along. So it's great for flowering displays or, of course, any of your potted vegetables. And I try and do it around once a month in the growing season, but commonly it's just when I get round to it. So when it comes to pot plants, water is key. Watering is really one of those things you need to be really diligent about when you're growing container plants. And the smaller the container, the more often you will need to water. You need to keep that reservoir full so on a hot day, they have that moisture available. One drying out can be the death of some species. Now, heat is, of course, an obvious cause of drying out, but a light breeze will actually dry your pots out even more quickly. Moving potted plants into a sheltered spot out of the wind can help reduce transpiration. One little technique I've developed for growing some of my thirstiest potted plants is to kind of use the best of both worlds, both pots and the ground. Now, these are strawberries, which I like to grow in containers because the fruit can then hang over the edges, it keeps it clean and keeps it out of reach of things like slugs and snails. But, of course, in a container, they are much more susceptible to drying out. So what I do is I dig a little trench and I actually sick the pot about a third to a half in the ground. I backfill around it. And that means when I water, the water that runs out of the pot stays in the ground around it. And then on a hot, windy day, they have both insulation around the base of that pot, but also access to that moisture. It's been a really successful technique, keeping the strawberries coming for much longer than when I was growing them in containers alone. And I reckon it's a great one to use for any of your really thirsty potted plants. How you water matters, so make sure you give your plants a really good soak. Submerging the whole container in water will help, leaving it for around 30 minutes until all the air has bubbled out. With almost all potted plants, there does come a time where a little bit of extra food and diligent watering won't be enough. If you find that the leaves are dulling off and yellow or when you water, it just rushes straight through the pot, it doesn't re-wet well, it is time to move into another container. Now, I've had this macroot lime waiting to be potted up and I think it's really raring to go. I'm growing this for its foliage only, not fruit. And so I'm gonna put it into this slightly larger container and I'll give it a really good prune to flush out that new growth. So we've got a small amount of potting mix in the bottom here and I'll just carefully tap this out. Oh. So those roots are actually really loose, which is quite unusual, but it means that they should shoot away well in this new pot. I'm actually gonna cut this larger one away because 
It is starting to bend around in that container. Whenever you're handling potting mix, it's important to be careful. I'm wearing gloves, but I also moisten it down to reduce any dust coming up while I'm working with it. It's important with pots, when you go to fill them up, don't fill them right to the top with that potting mix because what happens is the water will hit it and it'll literally just shoot over those edges and you'll lose it really quickly. I always allow at least 50 millimetres from the top of the pot to where the level surface of the potting mix ends. I am going to add just a small amount of organic fertiliser around the surface. And then I'm going to use a gravel mulch on this pot. Now it's going to do a number of different jobs really well. I love gravel on pots. First thing is, of course, it'll cover that surface and stop evaporation moisture straight from the top. The other thing it does is it's really fantastic when you water the pot, that jet of water from the can or the hose will hit that soil and it can end up blasting it all away. But if you've got a nice protective gravel layer, it'll hit that, it'll percolate straight through and it'll do a fantastic job of protecting those roots. So I'm just also gonna take a little bit of height out of this because it had a bit of a reduced root system. It's a risk of rocking itself out in the wind. So I'll take that stem out there and tip prune that. And then I'll just give that a drink. It's gonna go into a nice sheltered sunny spot and I reckon it'll be in a curry before the week is out. Of course, one of the best solutions for any potted plant problem is a new view. Look, I'm sure everyone has a neglected pot plant like this. This is a rose that I've had probably over a decade and I think it's been damaged somehow along this stem, I'm not sure why. And that means a lot of the plant has died off. It's only one side that is actually growing. Now I could pot it into a big, clean, fresh pot and see how it goes, but I think I'm gonna give it a chance in a compost rich, sort of lovely sunny spot in the garden and see if I can revive it that way. So the first thing I wanna do is remove a bit of this damaged growth. Next thing is I've gotta get it out of the pot, which is always a challenge when it's got a lip like that. You can't lift them straight out. So I'm just gonna loosen right around the edge it's actually quite wet in here, which makes me think maybe that pot isn't draining particularly well. Could have been one of the causes. Yeah, it's a tiny hole. A new spot in the garden. We'll give it a new lease on life. And then even if this doesn't thrive, I can take cuttings from it, make more plants, and then this potted specimen will live to see and flower another day. But it is worth doing an audit. Every few months, work through your pots, work out what needs some attention, what might need a completely new home. You'll have much more success and your plants will thank you for it.